Hello, I'm Aaron Gemmel, and welcome back to the Hot Seat Sports Talk. We're back up in central, at Central Michigan, and joining the show today uh, is CMU softball player Sammy Mills. Uh, Sammy is a graduate from Lance Cruz High School, which is very close to Frazier. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a great interview. And without further ado, let's get these opening credits started, and let's get the show up and running. All the viewers out there that don't know, where did you go to high school, and uh, did you play other sports in high school besides softball? Um, I went to Lance Cruz High School, which is in Harrison Township, Michigan, and I played softball and volleyball all four years, and I played basketball my freshman year. Okay, um, so your high school resume is pretty uh, impressive three three time All County, um, three time Most Valuable Player, three time League MVP, you know. You know all you know all these awards that you've won. So, out of all of those accomplishments that you have, which are you most proud of on the uh, softball field? Um, I think, like from high school overall, it would be. I mean, it, as an individual goals, it'd be like the league MVP. I thought that was like yeah. cool and like exciting because in high school I was a pitcher, which is funny because now in college I'm a catcher. So. <laughs> I okay. thought that was like fun yeah. to get as a pitcher. Yeah, and winning uh, MVP in a conference like the MAC back where we're from, that's not an easy task because there's always good teams every single year. And if I recall, Lance Cruz has always been a really good softball team. I would know because Frazier would always go down every single time that we played <laughs> Lance Cruz. So, um, so when did you start getting college offers for softball and did other schools besides central reach out to you and like, who, who were those schools and uh, did you visit and consider going to any other schools to start with? Um, I don't, I think it was my freshman year of high school when I like got my first offers and yeah, I had like <clears throat> several other schools. I had a couple like Mac schools too. Like I took visits to which were cool. But, yeah, it was uh, the summer after freshman year was when I got my first offer. Okay. Uh, what made you choose uh, Central Michigan for your college softball career out of all the other schools? Um, I think overall, like, the environment at Central and, like, the feeling, like, it feels like home here. So that was definitely, like, the main reason. And it's only, like, two and a half, three hours from home. So I thought that was good. It's like my family. I knew my family and like friends could still be able to come up and watch. But overall, like definitely the community here and like how athletics are, I really like. Okay. Um, so in your first season back in 2019, you started four or three games as a catcher. So first off, how did you go from a pitcher in high school to a catcher in college? Well, I was always a catcher like in travel and stuff. And I pitched when I was younger and then in high school – we didn't really have pitchers. So I like pitched all high school, but only caught like all summer and all travel. So I'd only pitch in high school and catch like whenever else I was playing. That's interesting. So like I said, you started your uh, first season, 2019, you started 43 games as catcher and you had your first NCAA hit against Wichita state. Uh, tell me what was going through your mind when you stepped in that box and uh, before you got your first hit and ultimately when you got your first hit, what was going through your mind? Um, I think like overall, like my freshman year, definitely like hitting, I struggled a lot as you probably can see, but I think it was more just like my mindset in the box. Like my first hit was obviously really exciting. And then like I did struggle. So it was just, I think where I went wrong was my like approach, like not letting the at-bats before go so much. So I think 
like overall that's what I struggle with but I mean it's always exciting to like get the opportunity so that was fun Absolutely. So now I've always wondered this as a sports analyst. Can you tell me why softball starts so early, especially for college in like around February? Is it supposed to be like that as opposed to starting at the end of March and beginning of April? Um, I think the main reason is just so it's not all through the summer. But this year it's definitely going to be different just with COVID because normally like we'll travel down south like in February but we can't really do that. So I don't really know how it's going to be because it's going to be really cold here. Yeah, because so, yeah, well, I have a few questions about that coming up in a little bit. So, like, what are the atmospheres when you guys do go down to Florida and the southern states for uh, turn- tournaments and stuff like that? What are the atmospheres like down in Florida and those tournament games as opposed to atmospheres up here at Central? Um, well, it depends where we go. Like we've gone, like we've played at Arizona state, which was definitely like probably my favorite place to play at just cause like their stadium was really cool. And just the atmosphere, like there being a really big school. But when we like our spring break, our normal spring break tournament, but that got canceled this year, but normally it's just a lot of like softball but like 10 15 game stadium versus like just at a park with several fields yeah for sure um so like, what are those tournament trips like down in Florida? Like, how like how are practices held? Do you guys live in hotels, dorms, for those tournaments? Like, how do you know how does that work for those tournaments down down south? Um, normally we're just in hotels, but like our normal spring break, we're in like kind of like a condo like hotel. So it's like more like there's like upstairs, downstairs. There's three people. There's like a kitchen, a little living room, and then we stay at like a nice place with a pool. So that's what like that's like so it's really fun like normally spring break is like our favorite trip we practice like we'll have two off days without games and we'll practice one of those days and the other day we'll have off and we'll usually do like a team day like at the beach or like a team bonding like at a park nearby or something like that very cool very cool to hear so now sammy uh now this next segment I've done with every single guest um, to this point for, from NFL, NBA, um, for central central athletes as well. So I'll rapid fire seven, just seven random questions, just to get to know you better, so, uh, so the viewers can get to know you better. So you have it. You stole you stole my first one, saying Arizona State's your favorite place to play in college so far. Um, what is your favorite food? Um, I'm not picky at all, so. I mean, I like pasta, I guess, like shrimp and chicken alfredo is probably one of my favorites. Mm, very good. Favorite place to vacation? Um, definitely California. That's where my aunt and cousins are from there. That's where I want to live when I'm older. But they live in San Diego. So I would say around the San Diego area. San Diego. Okay. And uh, your favorite sport to watch on TV? Um, football, for sure. All right. All right. Uh, favorite TV series of all time to uh, binge or binge or stream or especially during this pandemic? Um, surprisingly, I really don't watch a lot of TV like at all, which a lot of people think is weird. But I really I don't think I've ever finished like one show all the way through ever. <laughs> all right. Um, so your favorite music artist and song by that artist? Um, that's a tough question. I would have to say, well, Juice World was definitely my favorite, like before he died, but I can't pick a specific song. I, I don't know. I listen to a lot of music, so that's, I have a really broad like spectrum of that. But. Broad horizon. Okay. Uh, your mm-hmm. favorite thing to, favorite thing to do at Central, favorite thing to do on campus, off campus, or around like Mount Pleasant? Um, I would just say like hanging out with my roommates and like my friends since I live like off like right off campus we live across the street from like the football house and the baseball house so just like all of us 
kind of hang out and then in the summer I would say definitely like the same thing or going like to the like parks nearby or like the pool for the day okay. and finally for this uh rap, rap fire seven segment uh your favorite place that uh favorite restaurant to eat uh in Mount Pleasant when it's open of course <laughs> um that new like hibachi place that I don't okay, really yeah. remember it, but the new one they just put in we only got to go like once before it closed but it was so good well hopefully after uh the first of february you guys can head back there uh when everything opens. yeah i know uh, so now in 2020 obviously uh your season was cut short due to the pandemic now tell me where were you and when did you get like a call or an email saying that the season was over how did the team process that and how did you process that individually well we were actually playing we were on spring break and we, it was like one of the last couple of days and we had like a double header and the night before we heard like the big 10 canceled and we were like, Whoa, like what's going on? We didn't, I don't think like when we were down there, none of us really realized like this could be our last like games or whatever. And then we played, like we woke up in the morning and our coach was just like, Hey, this might be the last day of the season. And we were all like, what are you talking about? Like, this is weird. And then we played the first game. It seemed so normal. And then after that game, like we could tell that coaches got a call or something. And then they came up to us and they're like, the next game is the last game of the season. And then we're going home. And we still had like a couple more days left of the tournament. And it was just like, and they just told us like, let's play it. Like it's a championship game and like go from there. So it was definitely like, was sad. And I think it really like shocked a lot of us. It definitely caught us off guard, but we are also happy to know we like got told before, like this is your last game. So we kind of got to celebrate it in a different way than playing and then being told like we're done. Yeah, absolutely. So now it's, now it's January uh, and the season's supposed to be around the corner to start. Uh, is there going to be a softball season at CMU in 2021? Yes. I mean, I truly believe there is unless something crazy happens. Our, we haven't gotten like our official schedule yet, but we've gotten like the basis of like all our conference games. We're still supposed to play a couple preseason games. So hopefully that, that would be the only thing like that we're worried about maybe not having, but I really think we'll at least play all our conference games. Okay. So now you guys, are you guys currently practicing? How is, I know, like how is COVID protocols come in? You guys were masking your practice. Cause I know a couple of central teams up here for different sports, like basketball up here, they practice in shifts and, you know, players come in at certain times to practice. Is that, is that how it goes for you guys? Um, you guys wear masks when you practice. How does that all go down? So as of right now? Um, yeah, we just started practice this past week on Thursday. So we've only had three practices so far since we've been back, but we wear masks the entire practice and like lift and conditioning so we since especially like inside when it's we're outside it's a little bit different but we still have to wear a mask the whole time and then we get tested we got tested actually at noon today but three times a week and then go from there but okay so tell me this if some as your coaching staff has your head coach talked to you guys about like in case one of your um teammates gets you know gets tested positive like what happens to the team after that um you know do you guys go into quarantine for a couple days or does that particular player go into quarantine for a couple days how's that work um so we're like when we get tested we're paired with like our roommates so like regardless so if I tested positive then my roommate would obviously be in quarantine as well and then it would just be like the normal contact tracing list so that's the good thing about wearing masks at practice because like if I like happen to test positive, I wouldn't take anyone else out unless we hung out like prior, like before. And it was like a normal contact tracing list. Okay. So football, football had obviously at the beginning, they had limited attendance and then eventually no attendance basketball and women's basketball, both basketball teams had no, no attendance at all. Do you think there'll be limited capacity attendance by the time softball season comes around for your home games this year? Or do you think there'll be no attendance at all this year? Um, I think since we're outside though, for sure be like allowed fans. I think it might be like different or like more spaced out. Like people could probably sit like more along like the sides and like the baselines versus like everyone in the stands. 
But I think unless something crazy happens that since we're outside, we should for sure be able to have fans. Well, I, re- I really hope that actually I, that happens. Uh, I haven't been to a softball game yet. I would really love to come to a game, uh, you know, just to, just to feel what, you know, a college softball game is like. So, and finally for you, Sammy, uh, is there, so you, like we said, do you, you don't know your opponents yet um, for 2021. Do you guys think you, it'll be an all Mac schedule, like football's done, basketball's done to this point, or do you guys think there's a slight chance you'll play like Michigan, Michigan state, Detroit, Oakland, and just in-state teams? Um, well, we, so far we are told we have two, like, set preseason tournaments right now. I know we're going to Northern Kentucky at the end of February, and that's supposed to be, like, our first games. I'm not sure who we play there yet. And then we are supposed to be able to go to Florida just for, like, uh, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that's when we'll play, like, definitely different schools. And then when we start our conference games, we're actually playing 40 conference games. So we're playing each team four times in a weekend, which will be a lot. But Wow. Huh. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. So you said you said forty conference games. Mm-hmm. So each team four times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's definitely a heck of a schedule. Plus you throwing in your Florida, your Florida tournaments plus Kentucky. That is quite uh, a schedule to get prepared for in a sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, and but our MAC tournament did already get canceled just because of COVID. So which kind of like definitely is sad because that's like something everyone plays for but exactly yeah and it's also a sense of like you know you guys obviously still have your regular season champions and stuff like that so I mean that's still something to play for so um as of right now because you know because you know you're obviously you're obviously uh starting catcher and stuff like that how's the team looking so far like is this a team that um that is poised to make a deep run in the MAC this year despite a very heavy schedule. Uh, Yeah, I think we have a lot more players this year than we have in the past, which I think is good, which will give us like a lot more depth. And like so far we've only had three practices, but I think like we do like really good. And in the fall we look really good and like definitely have more depth, like pitching, which will always help and stuff. The only thing is like with COVID rules, like we could be down players, but that's why like it's good that we have so many. Yeah, so yeah. I think I think we should be really good this year. I'm excited. I'm I'm very I'm looking forward to the softball season. Um, as opposed to all the winter sports, hopefully they can everyone just gets started and, on time and everything can be somewhat normal to what we've been uh, accustomed to for the past <laughs> year and a half or so. Um, yeah. So, but Sammy, that's so Sammy, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, being the first softball player, it's really been an honor to have you. Um, you know, because we've had a few baseball players, I've been ever a softball player, so it's really cool, especially <laughs> um, being so close, being from rival high schools, too. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's funny, <laughs> but thank you. A little short interview today, but a great interview overall. Um, you know, being being Fraser, she being a Lancer, uh, I think that's I think that was uh, pretty cool uh, to start with, and uh, just to hear what's going on at Central with all the uh, COVID COVID protocols with uh, all the uh, sports going on, start getting ready to start for the spring season. So hopefully uh, everything gets started up and everything goes on time. Everything starts on time. So thank you for thank you for tuning in for this episode. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share the show as well. If you haven't catch if you haven't caught the latest episode with Katie Sadler, please head on over and check that one out. Uh, that is a very very cool interview, and that is all that we got for this show uh, today. And we and we will be back. We'll be back. And I screwed that up. Okay, cool. Uh, take two. Man, what a great interview! Uh, of course. Uh, he being a Rambler, she being a Lancer, being pretty close, both going to the same school. I think that's uh, pretty cool. Um, and uh, just hopefully every spring sport up here at Central gets started on time. Um, 
and hopefully and hopefully the softball team does make a run with that very heavy schedule that they have in front of them. Uh, so that will do it for this this installment of the Hot Seat Sports Talk from season season six, episode six. If you haven't already catch if you haven't caught season six, episode five, guest starring Katie Seller, please do that. Uh, it was a great interview with her, um, talking about her and her bro- brother Mike Sadler and uh, the found- and the Michael Sadler Foundation and what they're doing. So uh, we and that will do it for this show. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this show. Follow us all on social media: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that's all that good jazz. And we will be back when we have a ne- when our next guest is. So until then, as always, keep it fresh.